Aloha and good morning. I'm Kamakana Bray, Kumo for Kawaii Maoli Wood Carving Academy. This morning, we are going to do a new start in a carving, a beginning of a new ki'i. And uh, this year, wood is, uh, again, it's been found lying around for a long time. And I pre debarked this, so I'm going to do this carving today. We'll start on this today. And uh, it's made out of core. It's a core wood. And I'll start the debarking. Then I'll go into the carving after the debarking process. This is what I'll be using, a flat chisel. And I'll be skinning the inner parts of the sap. This is going to be a, a unique carving because, as, as we can see, the wood is all not straight. It's not evenly round, nor it's evenly straight. So it's going to become a, a unique carving because of the wood itself, different contours. This wood was sitting for quite a while. And for reasons, they don't have any bugs in it. But it, it started to check, you know, cracking. Most likely from the temperature change where this was located at. A friend of mine, two days ago, he got a few pieces of wood. And uh, I came to his mind, and when he seen me, he said, hey, you need a piece of wood? I got some wood. I said, okay. I can do that. He said, it's not straight. He said, well, it don't matter. So I got this wood from him. And thankful.
there's two ways of carving this particular log. One is a direct carving, which you'll see later. And the other way is template outlining. You know the template outlining? It can, it can be done that way. <clears throat> it can be done that way. But I'm accustomed to doing the universal way of carving. But that does not leave out. I don't apply the template application. I don't really clean it completely clear of the, the intercept bark. But as I carve and I go along, I'll be taking off that part. Cleaning the log is easier to do your marking if you're going to do any markings on. That's the only difference when you have it clean. So there are different approaches. with the carvings. Okay. That's about pretty much should be okay. Now, as you notice, I'm standing this piece of wood upright. By looking at this, I have uh, many options where I'm going to put his facial expression. I can do his facial expression this way, and he's looking down, or his facial expression this way, he's looking, he's bending backwards. So I would think for, for this particular time, his face features will be looking that way. And now I'll start the cutting. I'll use my flat chisel and I'll do looking at the wood. Then I can do a cut here. What I'm doing is I'm cutting 
an easier lineup on his height. So I'm cutting, this part is top of his head. And we have a little bit of dry spots here, but that's not a problem. The wood is aged, been sitting around. Probably from the time of Hurricane Iniki. But this wood can be salvaged into making an art piece. Now, as I've got that I applied a cutting from a different angulations or center lining. When you select your wood, to your choosing, from that selection, for that subject, and the object. Will be will be very interesting.
I'm thinking, <clears throat> what's the age of this wood? Although it's just a branch, part of it, coming from a tree trunk, but uh, I'm gonna give it a check. How old is this? Maybe it'll be quite some years on this. This wood. The person that I got this wood from is, uh, he's, he's not a homana, he's just a friend. He's giving it a, a shot to, to carve on his intuition. Sit on, you know. He wants to learn, but at this point, he's got so many projects going on and he can't get the schedule. So he asked me for advice, how to begin. So I advise him in what to do. Then he would say, ah. Oh. gonna take me a while. I said, well, it's okay. You know, do what you can. Put it aside. And you'll know when to get back on your carving. I said, what I do is I don't complete the carvings. I bring it to near completion and I put it on a shelf. Then I give it a go over for the finishing. Then he would say, oh, but uh, you know, if if you had it on a market and somebody ordered it from you, what, what do you do? I said, uh, you know, <clears throat> the whole point of the carvings I do is not for the market. It's to perpetuate a culture. So I don't place myself in that predicament where I work with you know, 
Uh, they call that clientels. So I told my, it's not my speed yet. I just do the carving to perpetuate a culture. He said, oh, okay, okay. I got that. Speaking of that, many years ago, I met a young man. He was into carving. And he asked me, a, well, like, you know, a question and answer by saying, uh, all the years that you carved as to supposedly be a secret in your techniques. And if you should put it on a lecture basis. In half an hour, you can explain everything about your carving from the years of experience. Is that true? I, I said to him, Education is like this. You go to school at an age of pre preschool, they call it. Yeah? He said, yeah. From then you go to kindergarten. After that, you're elementary, and you're going to high school. And if you go to college, so far. And he said, okay, okay, I got your point. I said, what I do is, I teach the students, how mana, the basic carving fundamentals for each stage, phases, phases, I say stages, but it's phases. I teach the basic carving fundamentals for each of the phases that they need to go through. That way, when they leave, they have the tools that they learn and they evolve. So that's what I do. You see that? Okay, I got one more question for you. I said, well, if I can answer your question. You see, what do you think about copycats? And I tell him, I wouldn't put it, I wouldn't put it in that prospect, that way. I would look at it this way. Whoever looked at my carving or somewhere, some way. 
they would study into it. By studying into it, and well, they're doing carvings also. By studying and looking at my carving, looking at the angulation and different kind of forms and all that stuff, then if they learn something from my carving, and they don't give any credit to me, I really don't care. I really don't care. But I'm not offended also. But I really don't care because I know what I've learned from my Kona Nui. And to what my art is all about. That's all I have to say. Then, with a nice guy, nice young man. And he said, do you think I can learn from you? I said, well, put it this way. <clears throat> Every individual has the capabilities and uh, the desire to learning. But I'm going to say no to you. He said, why? Why? I said, well, For matter of professional courtesy and, re and respect, you're already learning from somebody else. Supposedly, if I accepted you, now you're just supposing me. Now. When you're in the classroom that I teach, what you learned previously, you leave it out the door. Otherwise, going to be confusing for you. But all in all, you'll be okay. You listen to your teacher that's helping you and guiding you along the way, you'll be okay. And I also told him, I had a few students in the past, they were learning, and they would come to attend the classes which I was teaching. I would do the same for them. And they, He said, okay, but then you know what happened? While they were learning from their previous teacher, they brought that habits 
with them, you know, when they carve, it's like an automatic thing. So I would have to redo their carving. And it took a while for them to, you know, get free of that, sort of all that disciplines they learn. But I'm sure your teacher is doing the best he can for you. So hang in there and, uh, you know, just continue. Continue your journey. So he left, you know, we shook hands, shake hands. Then he left. Then he left. And I haven't seen him since. I don't know if he's carving yet, but still, because he wasn't from this island. He was from Oahu. Carving <coughs> is very interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some some uh, carvers that. Uh, I know, as uh, you know, friends, they listen music while they're doing their carvings. So, in a jokingly way, I tell uh, Your carvings are going to be like the music you're listening to. And depends what you're listening to. If you're going to have a station that plays all kinds of different tunes, well, you're going to have one different carving. Because your mind and ear is listening to the music. So when the music changes to a different song, what happens there? You're on a different tempo. If it's a disco song, you're going to have the disco feeling. If uh, slow paced, you're going to have uh, that kind of carving. So it's nice, no? nothing wrong with that. You can relax your mind while you're carving, but don't get, don't get caught up with it.
I'd like to, I prefer to do the carvings in the highlands. You know. I usually do my work at a river. Part of the river is from Mount Waiale Ali. I can see the water, the river, how it flows and how it adapts while it's moving along, moving along, you know, and it's a continuous flowing of energy in the river. So it's part of, you know, looking at the river, how it's flowing, he adapts himself, and going around rocks, going drops and turns, and just a constant, endless flow. So I usually do my carvings at that particular area. So this, what I had done, I'm cutting on a base, this was the base bottom of his feet, and this was the bottom part of his jaw. And uh, the next cutting I'll be doing is waistline on that areas. But uh, it's about that time. And, uh, but uh, before closing, I'd like to share this, uh, this lamp here. This is a, a Kamehameha warrior's head. It's a lamp, I got no light bulb, you know, on this. Put a bulb in here, nice shade, and you're good to go, you know. So this was done in uh, <clears throat> 1967, this, you know. I did this in 1967, and uh, I did a pair, you know, it's uh, made out of monkey pot wood and it's pretty much held up all these years, you know. So I just wanted to share these, these carvings with you all out there. And our next <coughs> phases in carving will be these forms of carving. You know, we're gonna you know, take a break on the key carving and we're going into this type of carvings. As, uh, as you can see, the, the one that I worked on, it's not done. As uh, you know, I'll do a refinishing on it, and for now, it'll be that way until I take them off the shelf, and I'll give it a work over. And as we all know, that's cool, resting in the clouds and valleys over Mount Waiale Ali. Then again, I thank you for your time out there, for being patient and watching the start of this uneven wood. 
So it'll be okay, but it just looks all distorted right now, but it's gonna work out. Again, mahalo for your time, and I will see you on the next time. Mahalo, Oyiki. Aloha.